Why would you leave Microsoft? I know Microsoft is a dream company for so many people and you got that dream. What convinced you it was the right time to leave? I've been at Microsoft now for three and a half years. The culture at Microsoft started to shift as well. And so it didn't quite align with um, my goals anymore. It was time to leave. What did you think working at Microsoft would be like when you started? And did that reflect the reality by the time you left? It was very different than I expected. What is one thing you would change about your career at Microsoft if you could turn back the clock and start over again? Yeah, so I think... Hi friends, welcome to the channel. For those of you new here, I'm Maddie and I'm a senior software engineer and I talk all about tech and software engineering advice on this channel. Today we have a super special guest, Pooja. This is my first time I've seen her IRL. She's so nice. We've been friends online for so long, but I've never been able to meet her in real life. So crazy that we're finally meeting in real life. Yay. Yes. Today we're going to talk about what it was like for her to work at Microsoft, why she recently left Microsoft and what she's doing now. So you're going to get the inside scoop because this is happening. It actually hasn't happened yet, but by the time I post this video, Video, it will happen. That is true. Can you give us a brief overview on what you did at Microsoft and what you're up to now? Yeah. Thanks, Maddie, for that nice introduction. It's so nice to see you in real life. I've actually been working at Microsoft for about three and a half years now. And before that, I worked at Target and then a startup. And so right now at Microsoft, I was working on an internal team as a software engineer. And we did a bunch of different things revolving around security and then also creating or collecting metadata for the rest of the teams at Microsoft and then kind of making sense of that metadata data. So you could see like kind of a data team, security team amongst other things. And I guess this, the spicy question, why would you leave Microsoft? I know Microsoft is a dream company for so many people and you got that dream. What convinced you it was the right time to leave? Yeah, that's a really loaded question. There's like many different reasons that I decided to leave. Just I guess to give context, I really loved working at Microsoft. I thought it was very, very enjoyable. I learned a lot at Microsoft, um, especially dealing with ambiguity. I think it was something that I struggled with in the beginning because at the previous companies that I worked at, most of the times it would be given a task with very clear instructions on how to figure things out. But at Microsoft, it was different where I was given a problem uh, without any sort of solution and I would have to kind of be the guiding compass to figure out what to do next, which was very freeing, but also like difficult in the beginning. So all of that being said, I've been at Microsoft now for three and a half years. And so I decided to jump ship for a couple of reasons. One being that I'd been there for so long that I wanted to challenge myself to try something new. So I'd actually been on one team for three of those three and a half years. And then I did end up switching teams, but the culture at Microsoft started to shift as well. And so it didn't quite align with my goals anymore, which again, it might you know align with other people's goals and that's totally fine. But I think it would come time for me to just look elsewhere. And then other than that, I am also moving to Greece with oh, my husband. Oh. Yeah. So I'm not really able to work uh, like at Microsoft from a different country right now or, you know, it just it wouldn't make sense in my life. So yeah, I'm doing that and I'm doing content creation full time as well. I decided to take the leap and yeah, see how that goes. That's okay. amazing. I'm so excited to see all the additional cool content that you create in Greece. Also, Greece is so cool. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Was it hard to decide to leave? Because I feel like when I left Google, I felt like it was part of my identity. So it felt so weird to not have that anymore. Did you feel the same way or did you feel like it was about time? Yeah, so I felt both. Honestly, I grew up in the Midwest and so not a lot of people work in big tech. So so for me, sometimes it was really nice to hear like, oh my gosh, you work at Microsoft? Like sometimes it's just validating to hear those kinds of comments. So like, I feel like I'd gotten to a point where I was mostly staying for that sort of like the comments because people were like so excited to hear that. But less so for your yourself. Yeah, exactly. Like I wasn't as excited. Like when I first joined, I was super excited, but I'd gotten to the point where I had my own side business and it was very tiring to keep up with like basically two jobs at that point. And so again, I loved Microsoft, but I just felt for myself it was time to leave. Very valid. Like I feel part of me was also like, oh, it's so nice to be like, oh, you work at Google. Oh, you work at this. And honestly, Google is nice. Microsoft is nice, but it's it shouldn't be your identity based. Speaking of someone where it was my identity for so long. And I know hindsight is twenty twenty, but what did you think working at Microsoft would be like when you started? And did that reflect the reality by the time you left? It was very different than I expected. <laughs> so I guess I didn't really know what to expect. So for more context, I wasn't planning on working in big 
tech at all. But um, in 2021, I believe a lot of recruiters started reaching out to engineers. And so I was one of those engineers that started like this year long journey of interviewing at a ton of big tech companies. Like I interviewed at Google and Meta and Reddit and, and TikTok and all these other places. And so when I landed a job at Microsoft, I just felt like I won't ever get this chance again. And I was also thinking like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe they picked me. Like I had severe imposter syndrome during that time. Yeah. So for me, I didn't really know what to expect in the beginning. I had only had like the two experiences before at Target and the startup, but it was very different. I thought it would be very structured. And to a point it was, but that ambiguity that I had mentioned earlier, it was more so like a chaotic environment where you're trying to build things and then break things and then, you know, rebuild them when they break. So it's a very like fail fast environment. And I really loved that. I feel like it was kind of like working at a startup, but in a bigger company, I guess. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. But the work-life balance was great. I'd heard about that. And people were pretty open to new ideas on the team. And maybe that was team specific. But yeah, I, I thought it was a lot of fun and very different than working at Target. A lot less structured. I see. And I guess now that you've gone through the experience, so if Microsoft or some other big tech company magically was like, oh, you can work in Greece, you can like go wherever. Do you think you would take the opportunity or do you think that you have had enough with big tech? Yeah. That's a good question. So I think if you ask me now versus like maybe a couple of years later, maybe my answer will be different right now. I think I've like had enough because I just want to kind of do my own thing and run my own business and try this content creation route first. Also, I've fallen in love with just like building small AI apps on the side and like making little tutorials on that. And so just for my own, I guess, like mental clarity, I want to try to do my own thing before going back into big tech or even just like a nine to five job. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, no, I probably would have taken an offer to go work abroad in big tech. I, I would it's so cool that you are doing like AI apps in your free time. Um, what stuff have you built and what's your favorite app so far? Yeah, so I've kind of just messed around with like using Hugging Face and Google Colab and Langchain and things like that. And then I've also kind of just messed around with using different uh, agentic AIs. So like uh, Cursor. Winter. Yeah, Cursor. And then also OpenAI's Operator, which is really cool, but it's a little bit clunky, but it's, it's really cool to see. And then I'm currently working with a company, GenSpark, actually, that has a really cool agentic AI workflow. So it's kind of like working with tooling and then also like integrating AI into some apps. So one app that I built uh, was kind of like a mini ATS system. So yeah, so basically what it did was you upload your resume and then you upload a link to a job description and then it'll give you a score and then give you recommendations on what you should change for your resume in order to like get matched with that job. That's so smart. I think especially in today's like, you know, job market, it's so important to be able to put in all the keywords and like optimize your resume and being able to do that with AI would save you so much time. I, I wish I had had this when I was applying. I did everything manually, which is probably why I didn't apply to that many jobs. What is one thing you would change about your career at Microsoft if you could turn back the clock and start over again? Yeah, so I think visibility with leadership and networking is something that I'm naturally not very good at. So a lot of times what I would do is I would just kind of put my head down and like code or I would like work with just the people that were closest to me on the project and mostly collaborate with them. So a lot of times in the beginning, especially my manager didn't have like visibility on what I was doing other than what I told him in my one on ones. And then I was kind of encouraged to do more demos and like presentations to leadership, which I shied away from because I just didn't feel like doing those sorts of things I mostly just wanted to do the technical things and then anything in terms of like presenting I shied away from so that actually did stall my career a bit compared to my peers who did showcase the work that they did to leadership because that's really important to kind of show the business what you're working on and show the impact that you're making and that's another thing impact I sometimes had trouble aligning with impact versus like a cool problem that I wanted to work on so for example if there were five features and one of them was maybe like a really quick like one line fix in the repo but it impacted a lot of customers. I would usually, again, shy away from that and do the more complex feature just because it was more fun for me. Um, but in reality, like balancing your work with um, those highly impactful features and then also features that are, are more fun for your career, I think having that balance will help you propel your career forward versus like only choosing to do things that you might like if mm. that makes sense that's so true yeah i feel like especially in big tech it's more about showing what you do rather than doing some of the time to be honest and sure. that's something that doesn't come naturally to many people so i'm happy that like you realized that and like made changes to to improve that i feel like i also in the beginning i was like oh all i want to do is code i don't want to like talk to people i don't want to network 
yeah. became a sophomore year because I didn't want to talk to people. For sure. And yeah, now I'm trying to be better at that. Yeah, that's fair. We can both work on it together. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Thank you so much for answering all of my burning questions. I'm so excited to see your new journey and what you do. And I'm so excited to visit you hopefully in Greece this yes, time. Of course. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. If you enjoyed this, make sure to give it a like and subscribe and I'll see you the next one.